Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I want to talk to you tonight about Wayne D'Angelo. I am running against Wayne D'Angelo for New Jersey Assembly here in the 14th District. Now, here's a problem with Wayne D'Angelo. Wayne D'Angelo believes that we, the taxpayers, should pay for the government to create new jobs for our fellow New Jerseyans. I do not. Now, I understand that to some of you this may sound like a great idea. Yes, of course we want to help our fellow New Jerseyans. Of course we want to address the problem of high unemployment here in our state. But I would like to point out the ramifications of the idea of paying more taxes to create, to have to pay the government to create more jobs for our economy. Here's what it really comes down to. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have the money. New Jersey is the most expensive state to live in in the entire country. We have the highest property taxes in the entire country, and we have the highest debt per capita in the country, and more people have left the state of New Jersey than, than any other state in the country, which means we're losing revenue, which means there's a, a need for more revenue. It's a bad situation. And again, with when you consider the fact that we have the highest debt per capita, that doesn't really make us the most attractive state to invest in. But, Wayne D'Angelo thinks that we should cough up more money to fund government to create jobs. Jobs uh, for widening the interstate, jobs related to stem cell research, jobs related to renewable energy. He believes that we should, we should be paying for this, again, with money we don't have, ladies and gentlemen. The state is in over $71 billion of debt. We cannot afford to pay for the government to create more jobs. And there's another problem here. And that is this idea that the government is supposed to create jobs for us. It's called dependence. We shouldn't be breeding dependence. We're doing enough of it as it is. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, did you know that even if you are employed and working a part-time job, you can still receive unemployment benefits? In the last week alone, I have spoken with two people working part-time jobs who are receiving unemployment benefits. But wait a second, that doesn't make any sense, right? Because they're supposed to be called unemployment benefits, which means you're supposed to only receive those benefits if you're unemployed. But this is all part of this, this idea that the government can save the economy by creating jobs and subsidizing people's lives. Now, there's a major difference between... Uh, people who are in an emergency situation who are going to starve and uh, who are going to be stuck on the streets and people who are working jobs, part-time jobs, and are collecting money from us, the taxpayers. And again, what is the underlying idea here? Is the idea of dependence, dependence on the government to give you a job, dependence on the government to pay for you to live. This does not foster a strong economy. This does not foster a strong society. So what then is the solution? Well, it's, it's a single word solution that we have to talk about, and then we have to talk about how we work towards this. And this one word is independence. 
I will say it again, ladies and gentlemen. Independence. Wayne D'Angelo believes that we should breed further dependence on the government. I, Sean O'Connor, believe that we should do everything in our power to help and encourage New Jerseyans to become more independent. Now, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we have to do is address our broken education program, which is called Common Core. Now, what are the underlying problems with Common Core in a nutshell? Well, the first problem with Common Core is this. It's created by a few rich people who decided to, to come up with this idea. They fed it to the federal government, and the federal government said, we'll give the various United States federal grants if they will adopt this particular program, Common Core. Sounds great at first, perhaps, except when you think about it, this means that no longer is there this concept of um, different curriculums. No more competing curriculums, just this one set standard, this one set idea of Common Core. Well, when we take away competition, we take away options, we take away this looks better than this. We, we take away that, that concept of comparison and contrasting. That, that's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make about our broken education system is this. It discourages students from critical thinking, despite the fact that it is advertised as a program that encourages critical thinking. If it encouraged critical thinking, then it would be a lot more of um, philosophy and a lot more fiction and a lot more poetry than it is just straight nonfiction reading in language arts classes. Now, there's, there's no problem, obviously, with nonfiction reading, but a lot of nonfiction reading really isn't necessary for language arts. Nonfiction reading is good for history, and it's good for science. But in language arts, listen to the, to the concept there. Language arts, the art of words used. So those are just some of the problems uh, with our education system as it is presently. And does this education system teach independence to the students. Well, if it's not teaching them to think, if it's only teaching them to regurgitate facts in nonfiction writing, then no, it's not teaching them to be independent. It's not teaching them to question and create their own minds. Absolutely not. So this, if we're to be concerned about the future of New Jersey's economy, if we're to be concerned about the future of New Jersey's economy, we have to nullify Common Core and give control back to the school boards and the parents and the teachers. What else can we do to create more independence in the state of New Jersey? Well, we're going to have to be more austere in the way that we're handing out money to people. No more of this, uh, this special interest nonsense, these, these small business loans for minorities and women. Minorities and women don't need small business loans. In fact, th this, is, this, idea that, uh, this idea that minorities need small business loans, not only is it a racist concept, but actually, uh, if you go to Forbes.com, and you, you type in, you know, who are the most influential celebrities in 2013? Well, the most influential celebrity in 2013 is actually Oprah Winfrey, you know, who is an African-American woman. So, so th this idea that um, at this point in our history that we need to isolate people based on the color of their skin or their gender 
or even their income and say, well, they get special privileges because of one of those factors. All it does is, A, again, create dependence on the government. These groups will go to the government and ask for special money from our tax dollars. Right? That's the first problem. And the second problem, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that we've now divided ourselves into groups. And the law treats us differently. I believe that all individuals should be treated equally under the law. That's why I think slavery is wrong. That's why I think women should be allowed to vote. Because we should all be treated equally under the law. But at present, we're not all treated equally under the law. If you make a certain amount of money, you're paid a certain, you, you're, you have to pay a certain percentage of taxes. If you have a, depending on the color of your skin, you're more likely to get a small business loan from the taxpayers. None of this is fair, and it all comes back to this, this concept of dependence on the government. And furthermore, with this dependence on the government, government control uh, that is outside the realm of necessary government control, because the government's just supposed to protect us, not run our lives and not run our economy. But I, I bring this back to Wayne D'Angelo and remind you, Wayne D'Angelo believes that the government is supposed to control our economy, that we, the taxpayers, are supposed to pay the government to create jobs in our economy and throw money at people based on their income, based on their color, and based on their gender, and based on industries that Wayne D'Angelo likes, taking away our right to spend our money as we choose, taking away this concept of independence, this, this idea that we, the individual citizens, can create our own jobs. So ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to vote for me, to vote for Sean O'Connor for New Jersey Assembly, because I believe and an independent and strong New Jersey, not a weak, dependent, unfair New Jersey like Wayne D'Angelo. And I thank you very much for your time. God bless the 14th District, God bless the state of New Jersey, and God bless America. Thank you very much for your time.